Hi, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Lark, and this week my book is Lost and Found Cat, and it is a true story. Actually, the uh, second part of the title says the true story of Kunkush's incredible journey. Kunkush is the cat, and we're going to hear what happened to him. Uh, the authors are Doug Kunz and Amy Schrodes, and they were actually involved in the true story, and they got together and wrote this book. Uh, the illustrator is Sue Cornelius, and even though um, the book is illustrated sort of in a cartoon fashion, it is based on real people. So let's see what happened to Kunkush. Here we go. Kunkush, the lost and found cat. Late one night in August 2015, a car driven by a smuggler snuck out of the city of Mosul in the country of Iraq. The smuggler's passengers were a mother and her four daughters and one son. Their father had recently died. Sora, the mother, had paid the smugglers to help her family flee the country. Mosul had become too dangerous. A few days earlier, the family had gotten ready to leave. Since they could only bring what they could carry, they had packed just one bag full of food and water. They would buy clothes later. But Sora had decided they could not leave without their beloved cat, Kunkush. Sora prayed that the cat, hidden in a small carrier, would stay quiet. If the smugglers discovered Kunkush, the smuggler would make her pay a great deal more money. Two hours later, the car stopped and they were told to get out. Another smuggler met them and led them on foot through forests and over mountains, stopping only to eat and sleep in the woods. Sura Fields feared for her children. Rehab, 18, Hakam, 16, Mob, 11, Ahab, 10, and Ansab, 9. But they saw it as an adventure, often singing as they walked during the three-day journey. Sura and her son, Hakam, took turns carrying Kunkush at the back of the line, so that if the cat meowed, the smugglers would not hear him. Whenever they stopped to rest, Sura took Kunkush behind some trees to let him out and feed him. On the fourth day, they reached a Kurdish village where another smuggler was waiting to take them to Istanbul, Turkey, in a bus. While the smuggler drove, the family had to be on the lookout for the patrols trying to catch them. The family stayed in the city for two weeks, moving from one apartment to another. At least Kunkush could wander freely inside. Finally, it was time to cross the Aegean Sea to Greece. The family boarded another bus and drove to a place called Izmir on the Turkish coast. Then they walked three hours along the beach until they were told to put on life jackets. The Greek island of Lesbos was six miles across the the water. Kunkush and his family were crammed aboard a flimsy rubber boat. It was meant to carry only 25 people, but there were more than 60 men, women, and children on the boat, plus one secret cat. Almost as soon as the overcrowded boat launched, it began taking on water because it was too heavy. From the shore, people shouted at the passengers to throw their belongings overboard to make the boat lighter, but most refused. 
Sora tried to hold Queen Kush's carrier above the water until a wave drenched them all. The sinking boat had to return to shore. As a crush of people got off, Kunkush's carrier door was broken. Determined to make the crossing, Sora told her kids to stay aboard. The boat launched again, this time with fewer passengers. Sora was scared because only her son, Hakam, could swim, but her daughters were unconcerned, enjoying the ride in the sun after weeks of hiding. The three-hour crossing to Lesbos felt like it flew by, thanks to their excitement. Volunteers in Greece waited on the shore to help the hundreds of refugees arriving every day. As soon as the boat reached the beach, panicky, shivering passengers scrambled to get off. Hakam splashed ashore with Kunkush and put the carrier on dry land. Then he hurried back to help his mother off the boat. Wet and frightened, Kunkush pushed his way out of the broken door of his carrier. He quickly disappeared into the forest like a deer. While the rest of the boat passengers were loaded onto a bus to continue their journey, the family refused to leave without their cat. Several volunteers helped them look for Kunkush. They searched for hours. At last, they had to give up. The heartbroken family needed to leave, taking the next step toward their new home. In a little fishing village on Lesbos, near where Kunkush's family had arrived, there lived a colony of island cats. No one owned them, but the fishermen kept them well fed. A few days after Kunkush's family had left, volunteers noticed a white cat hanging around the local cafe. The white cat's fur was filthy and matted. He looked like he was starving. The local cat seemed to know he was a stranger. They hissed and spat and chased him away. One of the volunteers, Amy, told her friend and fellow volunteer, Ashley, about the cat she'd seen. Could this white cat be the one the family had lost? After questioning villagers and searching the island, Amy and Ashley found the white cat and took him to a local vet. Dr. Constantina shaved the cat's matted, filthy fur. She gave him his shots and other medicines, but this cat needed a name for now. Dr. Constantina suggested Diaz to give him strength. Diaz is the Greek name for Zeus, the king of the ancient Greek gods. The friends took Diaz back to Amy's apartment. His shaved fur was still full of sand and bugs. Amy bathed and scrubbed him until he was clean. Five minutes after his bath, the exhausted cat collapsed face down, mid-meow, and slept. Diaz stayed with Amy for over a month. Often he prowled around her apartment, yowling loudly. Amy believed he was looking for his family. Amy and her friends were determined to reunite Diaz with his family. But where were they? Volunteers created flyers, and Amy's friend Michelle, back in the United States, made a Facebook page for him. People contributed money to help pay for his medical care and travel. Before long, news stories around the, around the world about the lost cat appeared. Millions of people saw the videos, articles, and Facebook up updates about Diaz. He had become famous.
Amy was fairly sure that Diaz's family had left Greece. Many of the refugee families had traveled to Germany. Since Amy's time in Lesbos was ending, she made plans to take Diaz to Germany. She and Diaz flew to Berlin, where a British couple named Emma and Simon had agreed to take care of him and continue the search. If his family could not be found after a year, they would adopt him. Oh, I think I skipped a page. Hold on. Aha, important page. Here we go. And then on Valentine's Day, the family saw their lost cat on a news website. The oldest daughter, Rehab, who had learned some English, contacted Amy and her friend through Facebook. Everyone had been looking in the wrong place. The family was living in Norway, not in Germany. Rehab told Amy that Diaz's real name was Kankush. The volunteers arranged a Skype visit. When the family saw their fluffy white cat on the screen, they all called Kankush. His ears perked up. He started searching for his family. A photographer named Doug, who had been in Lesbos and Germany to show the refugees' story to the world, agreed to fly with Kunkush from Germany to Norway. But when he got to the airport in Berlin, the supervisor behind the counter told him he could not board the plane. That carrier is too small, she said with a sniff. Hmm. By this time, a crowd had gathered around Doug and his yowling white cat, Doug pleaded with her. He told her the carrier was the right size. That carrier is so small, that cat cannot even turn around, she snapped. At that moment, Kunkush made a dramatic 180-degree turn around inside his carrier. The crowd laughed, and the supervisor grudgingly agreed to allow them on the plane. In Norway, Doug rented a car and drove two hours to the family's new home. They were waiting eagerly for him. So was a team of camera people and reporters. Sora opened the door and blinked at the bright lights of the cameras. Then she burst into tears as Doug placed Kunkush in her arms. Mahabi, she murmured. That's Arabic for my darling. The entire family crowded around their long lost pet. After four months and thousands of miles, Kunkush and his family were finally together in their new home. We are all safe now, said Sura. Now, you know what I like to, I like to look at the back of the book, boys and girls, when the story's over. And there's a message from the authors, Doug and Amy. I'm just going to read you the first part. It says, when we first met Kunkush, we knew that he must have been a very special, very special to someone. Imagine how much his family loved Kunkush to carry him out of a war zone. Kunkush reminded us of our pet friends back home and how we would feel if we lost, we lost them because of war or a natural disaster. What wouldn't we give to see them again? And then they went on to say some of the specifics that happened. They also give a map, which I thought was nice. It shows uh, Kunkush's travel, where they started in Iraq, here in Mosul, all the way through Turkey and to the island in Greece, all the way to Berlin, and then to Norway. So quite a big trip. Then, still at the back of the book, we're not done, are the actual photographs of the real people involved and the real cat himself, Kunkush. This is Amy, the author. And then here's his family, Sura and everyone here in Norway when they were reunited. Okay, great story. I hope you enjoyed it, boys and girls. It's a little long, but I thought you would find a true story about a cat especially with a happy ending. Interesting. Love to know what you think. Have a great day, everyone.